before I head up to Larange and then get up in the air with the Sentry Flight Club, I better figure out a soundtrack for the road. Uh, the cool thing about these new Fords actually is that the moment you sit down, turn on your car, and uh, bust out your iPhone on Bluetooth, uh, it'll start playing the last song you had going. I think what's about to come on is Stephen McGuire. He's from Saskatoon. It's a tune called Irish Soul. There we go. I'd be meeting the Century Flight Club at a barbecue. There's 60 planes, 120 people, and a lot of excitement about the North. I ran into Karen Hill from Tourism Saskatchewan, who told me a bit about what I might see at the Athabasca Sand Dunes. Not something you really expect to see in Saskatchewan. Absolutely not. It's actually one of my destinations I think that I would love to get to. You can, you can take canoe trips in along the dunes, you can hike on the dunes for a couple days, and I've heard that there's plant life there that you don't find anywhere else. I've heard that there's petrified forests that come and go under the dunes. So I think that uh, of all, in my top 10 places, Athabasca Sand Dunes is definitely on there. If the weather held up, I'd be flying out with John Lovelace, who runs the Century Flight Club. Yeah, we've got 18 aircraft in the air. We're uh, going uh, seven aircraft going direct to U City. Uh, the rest of us are going direct to Stony. Some of them are following the highway up and going along the the route that'll take the points north, and then in that way, some of them are a little more uh, comfortable over a road. We call it a highway. We call it the road. Uh, Century Flight Club was formed three years ago uh, on the 100th anniversary of flying in Canada and uh, we got together and we launched off of 100 air aircraft in Vancouver and went to Bedeck, Nova Scotia with the first flight. People th always think of Saskatchewan as wheat fields and it's not. I mean we basically half the province is this uh, Canadian shield, rich boreal forest and the thing that's unique about this area is that you've got this wonderful uh, river system that runs through and flushes out all these lakes and so it uh, keeps them uh, very uh, native fish populations are very uh, strong up here. I'm past the 59th parallel. I'm at Stony Rapids and I'm waiting for my ride. Uh, my original plan was just to go into the store and hang out and maybe snack on things for the last few hours, but then I realized everything's marginally more expensive here. Even though I didn't have beef jerky to keep me happy, I met this owl. He sort of hangs out during the day at an aircraft hangar in Stony Rapids and blinks at you. Weird guy. Eventually Cliff showed up and I asked him what it took to become a pilot. Uh, it takes a very, very understanding wife. Uh, what do you think, uh, being the wife and all, how is that as a project? It's the most expensive hobby a person could ever choose, <laughs> I think. Because once you have your pilot's license, then you have to have a plane, because you don't want to just have to borrow or rent a plane. And then once you have a plane, you have to have somewhere to store it, so you need a hangar. And then once you have a plane and you live in the north, you might think about floats or a better bush plane. You know, boy toys. Bit by the flying bug too. Cliff got me to fly for a little bit and now I can't help but think when I'll be able to afford a plane of my own. And there they were. The Athabasca Sand Dunes. Even before I got this job, they were on my list of things I'd have to see in Saskatchewan. These dunes, the most northerly sand dunes in the entire world, and the tallest in North America, are home to unique species of plants found only here. You can only access it by float plane or canoe. Eventually, we were past them, and then on to Uranium City, where more adventures were waiting. But I'll have to tell you about that in the next video.